high and dry in Devonport, it could be easy to forget about HMS Albion. She's not been to sea in almost five years, and of course her sister ship HMS Bulwark has been busy saving lives in the Mediterranean. But here she is, getting a facelift after three years tied up alongside, a result of the 2010 defence review. Babcock are now at the helm, and with plenty of work still to be done, I've come for a look around. On this bulbous bow here of the ship, that's been blasted back to steel and prepared where there's been damage. And you'll see where the little access hatch is. We had to remove that access hatch to allow us access for services and to remove the shot blast when we blasted the tank internally. And when you're, you're blasting it, what, what is that doing? Is that just cleaning it out? Yeah, so as part of a survey, we detected that the paint coatings weren't, weren't very uh, good and intact. Therefore, we've blasted the paint coatings back to bare metal, okay, and then started from scratch building up the paint coatings, uh, which should see the ship through the rest of her life. Well, this is a view of HMS Albion that you'll hardly ever see. 18,000 tonnes of warship towering above you, and it makes you feel absolutely tiny. And while she may look like a warship on the outside, inside is a slightly different picture. In fact, she resembles something a bit more like a building site. It feels like a shell, many parts of the ship barely recognisable. This is the operations room. And this is the bridge, normally bustling with people, filled with screens. But for now, it's empty until Albion prepares to make her return to sea. You can't really imagine how it's going to look. The imagination just isn't there to see what it's going to look like in the next year. This is the PO's mess. Uh, this is where POs would come after work to chill out, watch TV, drink coffee. So usually you would have cushions on these like sofas around here. Uh, you'd have your TV up in that corner. That would be a bar. So there'd be like fridges and everything. It would be full of people having banter and chilling out. Are you looking forward to sort of still being here in 12 months time, seeing what it actually looks like? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Like, especially from a weapon air point of view, seeing like the phalanx actually on board forward and aft is quite exciting. But yeah, no, definitely. And taking it to sea as well. Before she was mothballed, HMS Albion was deployed to the Middle East and saw action against the former Libyan regime. Well, we're in the Royal Marine Armoury and um, basically when we go to assault stations, the Royal Marines will come in through that door and they'll get issued rifles. Um, all these racks have four rifles in each. They get the rifle and then they'll make sure it's clear from any ammunition, go up to the assembly area and that's where I'll be issuing ammunition. Yeah, so after the Royal Marines have been given their weapons, I'll be stood in there. It's full of ammunition. Um, the team leader will come get the ammunition and dish it out. At the moment we're in refit, so my main job is to make sure um, the specifications in the magazine are adhered to. I'm liaising with Babcock and my main job is to make sure the firing systems are to the standards they should be. If you've ever been on HMS Albion or her sister ship HMS Bulwark, you might recognise this as the vehicle deck. And whilst there's not been much in terms of refit going on in this part of the ship, it has been where all the equipment from the engine rooms and other parts of the ship has come before going up onto the flight deck to be craned off. 500 tonnes of equipment in all. Engineers are changing over a copper nickel pipe from the main engine cooling system. It weighed around 300 kilograms. The new glass reinforced epoxy pipe weighs just 20 kilos. And the added bonus, it won't corrode. Significant work has also been carried out to the stern gate. The stern gate, um, because the, the way the ship was laid up, the stern gate hadn't been used for a number of years, so we had to ensure that we could open it in a very safe way. We worked out a, a process of recommissioning the gate before we could open it, which was uh, took quite, quite a period of time to ensure we could do it safely. But it's now up and running and will be set to work early next week. The government mothballed Albion just eight years after she joined the fleet. She cost £359 million. The plan is that she and her sister ship HMS Bulwark will alternate between high readiness and extended readiness. The refit began in October 2014 
and at any one time, 250 Babcock engineers can be working on board. The hard part about regenerating a ship from, uh, from a layup period is what, what, what the material state has deteriorated to. So a ship coming in from, from service, if you like, uh, will have a defect list and a crew that can help um, advise us with what's not working. Um, a, a brand new build would, uh, you hope all the, all the equipment being fitted is, is capable of being um, plugged in and, and almost plug play ready to go. Whereas with Albion, because she's been laid up for so long, we don't know to what state the, um, the, the equipment has deteriorated. And there's more than 100 additions and alterations, including a new freshwater cooling system, a new weapon system and a new fire detection system. We're doing really well with the um, with the re upkeep period. Um, it will be it's going to be quite tight getting towards undock, but there's a significant amount of work to, to do. Um, but we're looking good for it at the moment. HMS Albion will return to sea in 2017 as HMS Bulwark prepares to take her turn in layup. Rebecca Ricks, Forces News in Devonport.